Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be showing you a step-by-step -step on how I did this DIY shiplap in my um, dining slash kitchen area. So I'm going to be starting a little summer series. We're spending a lot of time at home lately with the kids out of school. So I'm gonna be doing a lot of fun little summer projects at home. So stay tuned, make sure you're subscribed. And yeah, I'll walk you guys through this Fun little project. You can also find me on Instagram at Valerie Aguirre where I share a lot of fun and behind the scenes there too. So jumping right into this little kitchen update. So this is what I was working with. This is our kind of bar slash island. It is kind of in like a U shape. And the people who updated this house before us just painted the cabinets. This is the back side of the cabinets and then added this white baseboard which has never been painted. So I definitely wanted to give this a little update and add some design detail with some vertical shiplap. The granite was brand new when we moved in so we're going to utilize what we have. It's still in really great condition minus that coffee spill. If you don't like the look of shiplap this was also another option I found at Home Depot. So this is the bead board. It comes in really large panels and is really inexpensive. I probably could have done that island for probably about $30 and added a lot of just design detail, some architectural detail, and it just makes a really big difference. But I opted for the five and a quarter inch nickel gap shiplap. So you can find this at Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, depending on your project, it can get pricey. So there are some other options um, that you can DIY shiplap as well. So for my project, I had the baseboards on the bottom that I had to remove. I also am going to cover up this little door because it is accessible through the other side of the cabinet, which is fine. We really don't utilize a lot of those things anyway. We're not in this cabinet too much at all. So I am fine with utilizing it from the back. So I'm taking off this baseboard, just using a utility knife to cut the caulking at the top, and then I'll pull it off with a pry bar. I am being as careful as possible not to damage or ruin the baseboard, um, just because I am going to try and reuse these. They match the rest of the house. I would love to change out the baseboards in my entire home, but for now, I'm just going to reuse that until we're ready for that point. So there are also some little trim pieces on the side that I'm gonna be really careful removing also. I don't think that I will be reusing those, but you never know. So I'm just going to be really careful in trying not to break them and I'm gonna put them in a safe place because they have nails poking out the back, so I definitely don't want anybody to step on those, so I'm gonna put those up high for safekeeping, and then when we're done with the project, we can toss them if we don't use them. Like I said, I will also be removing this door, and because the shiplap doesn't have any um, gaps that you'll be able to see through, I am completely fine just covering it completely. So under our bar, we also have these three little supports. They're just wooden. They don't really look like they do much, but I did look up some codes. And if you have a bar that's over 10 inches, you are supposed to have some sort of support under that. So I definitely make sure that I replace the support system and I'm actually going to be working with these kind of individually one at a time. So I'm gonna be working on this first one. And once I get that replaced, then I'll work on the middle one. I'm just super OCD about making sure that everything is safe and done correctly. So for the shiplap, I'm going to measure from the underneath part of the top of the bar all the way to the top all the way to the bottom our space was 34 and 5 8 so i went outside and cut about four shiplap pieces i'm going to not cut a ton all the same um, size just because i'm not 100 percent sure if it's measured the same all the way down sometimes walls bars different things measure differently. The floors are a little wonky sometimes, so I'm just gonna take it um, in little groups and then using my pneumatic nailer, nail them in in the very top where there is a base up there and then in the bottom, and there's a base in the bottom as well. When working on a cabinet or an island, you have to be careful um, nailing right in the middle. On the other side of this is our cabinet. So if I were to nail something right in the center, it's going to go all the way through to my cabinet, which will not be very pretty 
and the inside of my cabinet to have nails coming through. So I'm only going to nail right in the top and then right in the bottom. Sometimes people can use liquid nails, but that also might do some damage if you ever need to or try to remove. So completely up to you. So when I am cutting my boards outside, I use a compound miter saw. So here I'm measuring my 34 and 5 eighths, and then I'll draw just a little tiny line, and then I'll take a straight edge board, line it up so that I know that it's straight, and then make my cut. If you're looking to get into DIY, a compound miter saw is a really great tool to start with. So these are the supports I found. I found these at Home Depot. I liked that they have a very simple line, although I don't like those kind of curved edges, so I'm just going to cut those little curves right off the end there. So again, using something with a straight edge, I could have used a ruler, but I didn't have one on hand, so I always use this board for straight lines. So I am just making a little line right there and also on the other side, and then I'm gonna cut off those edges. Also when choosing corbels or supports, these are a solid wood. Sometimes they can be hollow, which I think provides less support. So also double check if you're looking for supports um, that they will support things correctly and the weight uh, correctly. And here is that little door being closed in. I am actually really happy to see this little door go. I feel like it just looks a little odd being there. So I'm happy to cover that up and make it look a little bit cleaner. And then this is where I decided to wrap the other side because it just wouldn't look right to only have the front wrapped, right? So I wanted it to all look cohesive. So there are a couple different ways that you can do corners. If you have a table saw with a mitering option, you can make that corner on a mitered edge using a table saw. I do not have a table saw with that mitering option. So I'm just going to butt the two blunt ends um, right over each other, if that makes sense. There are also some 90 degree trim pieces made specifically for corners. If you don't like your corners or your corners are a little bit imperfect, uh, the little corner trim hides them, although it does add like a little bit of a raised detail, but it's all just preference. So if you are still a beginner, that is also a great option that is very forgiving as well. So if your cuts are pretty much immaculate and you're really good at the measuring and everything, you really don't have to use a uh, trim piece on the bottom. It looks really, really clean, very seamless, but you have to be very precise with your cuts if you're not using a trim piece on the bottom. Again, all preference. So this end right here is going to end the shiplap, which I'm gonna put this little corner trim piece. This is the 90 degree corner trim that I was telling you about. So I'm gonna measure that out, cut it down, and then add this to the corner. So I will be painting the cabinets very soon. So don't let that fool you. I know it looks a little odd right now with the bright white and the dark brown. So I have a few more repairs to do on the cabinets, but they're still in really good condition. So we're gonna work with what we have. So for this top open piece right here, I'm gonna add some decorative trim to just camouflage those cut ends there. And then I'm going to put some wood filler in my nail holes. While that wood filler is drying, I'm gonna finish up these corner pieces because those also will need wood filler on those nail holes as well. So I like to give it um, at least half a day to completely dry. So I opted to use the corner pieces just because I felt like it made it look more finished. We could have really done without it. It wasn't, uh, you know, horrible looking the corners, but I just feel like it looks more completed if that makes sense. So we opted for those pieces. I will link them below if you're interested. I did experiment with a couple different paints because we will be painting this along with the cabinets. If you missed that, we're gonna be painting everything one color. So I wanted to give it a couple days and see which paint looks better, which light. Here are some of the samples that I picked in the end I ended up going with the aged beige 
I'm still about 99% on this one, so I'll keep you guys updated. Also before painting, I'm going to add some caulking. This is what I use. This works really great and it dries really fast. So I'm gonna add this to my baseboard seams and then also um, corners that have any sort of a larger gap. These are really easy to use. You just pull that metal bar all the way out, put your caulking in, and then you can tighten it as you go using the little trigger piece. So you cut off that end of the caulking. The more you cut off of that tip, the more product you will get. So I like to start smaller and have less mess, if that makes sense. So once the wood filler was sanded, the caulk was in the corners, I did one last cleaning with a microfiber towel or you can use a tack cloth, and then it was time to start painting. So quick tip, when using shiplap, you can spray it, or if you're going to paint it, anything other than white, you need to get in those little cracks, which are kind of annoying, but I just used a one inch little paintbrush and went vertical. You can see those two lines. The one on the left is painted and the one on the right is not. So by using the little one inch paintbrush, it gets right in the middle. And I just went ahead and did my uh, little crevices beforehand. And then for the surface parts, I'm gonna be using a foam roller. It makes such a nice finish and is a great option to spraying if you don't like to mask everything. Um, and there's something therapeutic about using a roller. I just love painting with <laughs> rollers. So from this angle here, you can see how I went ahead and did all the crevices first and then did the foam roller after. So this paint is a bare paint from Home Depot and it had really great coverage. It probably would have been okay with one coat, but I just think a second coat makes everything look a lot more finished. It just brings out more of the color and you have less things coming through. So I definitely like to make sure that I do that second coat. You can also see those supports underneath. So those supports, I actually screwed them in to the little support that was in between the uh, cupboards. And then also a very short one in the top that it didn't go through to the granite, but I know that it penetrated the plywood that holds the granite up, if that makes sense. So be careful with that. You don't want to crack your granite when you're going up with the screw. So this is almost completed. That little section over there still needs some paint, but you can see how much the trim just kind of completes it. It fits right in and that trim actually cleaned up really nice. That's the same trim from the very beginning. Um, I did have to alter a little bit of the cuts because the shiplap changes some of the measurements. So I am again using my miter saw. I was able to do that and they fit really perfect baseboards can be a little challenging when you're new but um yeah we'll get it so this is the final look of how they turned out i think they look so beautiful it kind of is a little bit of a modern farmhouse feel i really love the color and how much detail it brings to the kitchen so the next up part for this little update will be taking those upper cabinets down and opening the space up. It's going to bring in a lot more light and just look a little bit more modernized, a little bit more open, which is definitely the feel that I want for the kitchen and the dining room. I hope that this video was helpful in any way. Go ahead and leave me a question or comment below. You can also reach out to me on Instagram. I try to reply as much as I can on there. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll catch you next time.